All right, ladies and gentlemen, we have a fantastic conversations with the conversation with the directors and producer of the brand new film Nefarious. They are in the studio with us right now. One of the first, or first that I've seen of a film that is kind of in the horror genre, but is aligned with Christian writers and Christian creators. And so we have Carrie and we have Chuck, the producers, directors. Guys, thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate you guys. Thank you for having us. Thank you for having us on. All right. So let's let's get to how this film even got made and 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 got into theaters. What was the the, the I know there's some influence from C.S. Lewis's um screw tape letters in mm-hmm. the premise. And how did it come across your guys' uh, attention and, and getting it executed and made? Uh, one of my guys came in, his name is Chris Jones. He produced a film for us. Uh, and he said, I want to read this to you. He reads a paragraph out of a book. Uh-huh. And it was just a casual thing. But I, it struck me. And I said, that's awesome. Mm. And with who, the- who did it? Yep, yep. And, uh, and he said, Steve Dace. And well, Steve Dace works for The Blaze, talk show host. And he basically had done us a lot of favors on Unplanned, which is a movie that we had done, the Abby Johnson pro-life story. Uh-huh. And he's a guy that does political commentary, but but from a deeply theological base. Gotcha. So it, it, he's kind of unique in that way. Okay. So I said, get him on the phone. Let, let's see. Now, we didn't intend to actually go out and make the movie. Mm-hmm. We intended like, hey, why don't we make a movie three years from now, mm-hmm. kind of like, but to kind of let them know we were interested. Well, we're on the phone. They were so excited and fired up. Mm-hmm. Next day we got a check. That never happens in the movie business, mm-hmm. and so they were, they were like, "Let's go," you know. And wow. I was like, uh, "Suddenly we had the budget raised for a movie we hadn't written yet." So, so we had to go write it. Unique place to be. <laughs> you know, the thing I compare it to is like it, we're like uh, dogs who spend their life catching fire, tr- uh, chasing fire trucks. Uh-huh. You catch one, and now you got to figure out what to do with it. That's yeah. what that was wow. the position yeah. we found ourselves in. So you read this page. Right. From a book. Right. And what was the name of the book? Same same book uh, title? It, uh, Nefarious Plot. Nefarious Plot. And you see this page, you read it, you say, this is great. And the next day, there's funding for the film? Yeah, I mean, we get, we get, we get the check and I'm like, uh-oh, because we told them a number just casually, like yeah. we're talking now, like over coffee. Yeah. And they said, how much would it take to make a movie? I'm yeah. like, I don't know. But because we had this, you know, repartee, we knew each other, right? Yeah. Yeah. And so I'm like, I don't know. Yeah. Two million, whatever. Yeah, you yeah. know, whew, two million dollars shows up on our doorstep, wow. and I was like, okay. So now we actually have to go out and write it, which direct like it, lo- produce it. Which sounds like a lot of money, and is if unless you have to go make a movie with it. Yeah, right. It's not yeah, a lot yeah. of money. Yeah. Well, for context, and I don't know if this is verified, and hopefully, uh, Greg doesn't feel any way me saying this, but from context, I believe the budget for Jesus Revolution was 20 million. Right. Yeah, it's at least 15. It's probably yeah. closer to 20. Yeah. And it was probably 20 because of all the music they yep. had to get cleared right. for. Yep. It, right. yep. It's a lot of that old, old, you know, 60s and 50s music. So $2 million is, it sounds like a lot, but it's not a lot when you actually got to go and execute it. So the fact that I think that you guys were able to do this much with that budget, I think says a lot to God being in, in getting this thing uh, done. Yeah. This doesn't happen if uh, it wasn't for yeah. the man above. I two, mean two things that were very, very clear in the in the production of this movie. The adversary hated it and the Lord guided us through the process. Yeah. Well, I want to come back to all the spooky stuff that happened because you guys were just sharing a little yeah. bit about and the stuff that's been happening. So uh because that's fascinating. So you guys get the funding for it right away. Right. And then and then what's what's the process and, and, and the writing process and how did you guys kind of come up with this? Uh, premise. So we we called Steve up. He said, "Look, we this is great, but there's no structure to it." In other words, he wrote a book where it was a demon, mm-hmm. uh, kind of ranting and telling the reader that how he destroyed America. It was a demon, yeah. This this sort of stream of consciousness, his thoughts, kind of a series of almost interlocking sermons, for mm. lack of a better term on how he destroyed western civilization so we said to steve steve you know we we love it i love the concept it's very c.s lewis screw tape letters Mm -hmm. but then we need a story so if you're cool with it because i don't want to do anything to defame your book or change you because certain people don't want you to touch this stuff he's like dude i'm all in yeah and so i said okay let's let's you know so we came up with the story we put it together steve flew down we ran it by him you know and he was totally excited and, uh, you know, we were passionate about it. And the thing we promised him was we will not 
uh, we will honor the book. Mm -hmm. By the time we're done, we'll work it so it weaves into the book and stuff. Mm -hmm. So, but the whole story, the three murders and everything mm -hmm. else yeah. in the story, you know, that's what we do. It, you know, when you make a movie, yeah. you got to come up with a story. So, how close did you guys stick to the book? It's not. It's not. It's, it's not. just, just kind of, a book was just kind of like a, a general premise of, we took of it. The name Nefarious we loved. Yeah. I thought it was very cool. The, the yeah. character who's basically a lieutenant of hell, uh -huh. for lack of a better term. Uh -huh. Uh, we're like, okay, that's that's kind of interesting because much like C.S. Lewis did with screw tape letters, he had screw tape, and uh, he, you don't want to write the adversary. You don't want to climb into that mindset. But basically what we did is that uh, we, we constructed a story, mm -hmm. and it would wheel into the book. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people are saying it's a prequel, and, and you could do that, you mm -hmm. know, or a sequel or whatever. But basically we, we honored them by using the nefarious the, and the idea mm -hmm. Of basically a demon ranting, mm -hmm. ha ha ha! Yep. This is what I this is what I do. This is what I've done, and yep. you're you're through. Yep. And so from then the, the story gets written. Now, how long until you guys are shooting, and how long does shooting and all that kind of stuff take? Well, we tried to avoid it because you know we are so busy. We went through all these crazy machinations and stuff. And so one of the things that we it took a year for us to actually finish it. We'd start it, stop it, start. Mm -hmm. We had a lot on our plate. We had to take care of. We yep. were doing other projects. Yep. It took a year by the time we were done, and it was brutal. Okay. It was brutal. It was very tough to write. And and this is, what year did this get shot? This year or, uh, or last year, I'm assuming? Uh, the year before, actually, because literally we were hit with so many demonic manifestations, it took us an extra year and a half, two years just to finish the movie. Just to, just to, just to, to finish film? the movie, yeah. Okay, what about to film it? Uh, a long time. Really? I mean, we were, we were six days away from shooting, mm -hmm. uh, and then suddenly the whole crew was taken out with COVID. Mm. So that cost me five months and like six hundred thousand dollars. Got it. So this is twenty twenty. When was that? Twenty twenty one. Twenty twenty one. Okay. And then uh, we came back, and everything just you know constant problems mm. and but we kept overcoming i will say that the lord told us you know we prayed on it yeah and he said keep going forward be courageous stand firm you know stand firm yeah and so we kept fighting the fight but we were under assault yeah and did any of that create any type of um in terms of executing the the, the film aspect was did any of it then start to feel disjointed or anything or you guys just kind of kept kept popping back up and it just felt good no it, it, you know when you actually if you've got it on the page yeah. it's a blueprint it's an instruction manual yeah. and so if you hire the right people if you especially in the actors yeah. and we had some amazing actors the guy who played uh, nefarious his name sean patrick flannery amazing off the hook. Amazing. We're putting him in for an Academy Award. Yeah. I, I, we were so blown away. Yeah. But we had worked with him before. We knew he had the goods. Yeah. Jordan Belfi was across from him. He did a great job. Tom Omer was the warden. Yeah. But we had three guys yeah. in a room. Yeah. So, you know, we were able to push. And uh, the amazing thing is, like, on the first day, Sean and Jordan, uh, Jordan literally... We're five seconds away from rolling, mm -hmm. first day, and Jordan looks at us and said, I just had a baby boy. Mm. And that's a problem because as a human being, what am I going to yeah. keep him on set yeah, or yeah, I'm going to yeah. send him to his wife, yeah. right? Yep, yep, yep. But if he goes to his wife, I'm wiped out. The, the movie is wiped out. Mm -hmm. But we would have done it. But he turns around and we, you know, everybody's hugging and, and, and congratulating him. And I had a long conversation with him. But he said he looked right at us and he said, "I believe this is an important movie." Jeez, uh, me and my wife have talked about it. I'm here. Let's oh roll. my gosh, let's roll! Wow. First baby, yeah. first first son. Yeah, and uh, I, I would have left. <laughs> I would have been gone. I yeah, like, I, I mean, fellas, I would not have blamed you one bit. I need, I need 36 hours. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> figure right. It out. You want to see your kid? Yeah. But he was amazing, and Sean, uh, they they were rock stars. Yeah. Yeah. Where'd you guys shoot the film? Uh, Oklahoma and Texas. Texas. Okay. Dallas. And so it, took, it takes. Between on and off, it takes about over a year and a half, it sounds like. With all the problems we had, a yeah. year, year and a half, yeah. the actual shooting, by the way, yeah. is going to sound crazy. It was only 13 days. Oh, wow. Okay. But that's so... We were under siege. Wow. And then how long did it take to edit it and all that good stuff? Too long. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we were in there for, what, eight months, nine Something months? Something like that. Yeah, we had a first editor who took a pass at it and wasn't able to do a very good job as far as we were concerned. And then uh, the Lord... The Lord uh, knew we needed somebody else and out of nowhere uh, an editor amazing story just uh, called Steve Dace and mm -hmm. said look I know you've got by now you have your editor obviously and yeah. Steve's like no actually we're looking for someone else he's like 
okay, I want I want to take a look at this. I want to get involved because I believe in what you're trying to do. Yeah. He's a young guy. Um, His name's Brian Smith. I mean, he was so cool working at Netflix on horror stuff. Uh-huh. Said, I want to do this. Wow. And he was he was a believer and everything mm-hmm. else, but he was kind of oppressed there. Mm-hmm. And then he comes to us, but he's working on another project mm-hmm. and we're dying. And, an and then out of nowhere. An editor's standard day is a 12-hour day. 12-hour mm-hmm. is, so is the norm. Us, and if you're working hard, you're working more than 12 hours. But he says, basically, I'll fit you in with some time if you, you know, want to You know, 2 o'clock started. to 8 a.m. You Sheesh. know, kind of thing. I'm like, yeah. when are you going to sleep? He's like, well, dude, I love this. Yeah. So we were going to do it, but it would take 6, 8, 10 months. Yeah. A long time. You yep. got to go. So out of nowhere, talk about a God thing. Yeah. Netflix puts his project on hold. Wow. And literally keeps paying him. For the exact amount of days Puts we him on needed, paid hold because paid he's hold. such a wow. good editor. They don't want to so lose him. So he's working for us, yeah. getting paid by Netflix, and we paid him too, of course. Sure. And to the day, the amount of time we needed. Yeah. Coincidence? I don't think so. Yeah, and knocked it out of the park on on his uh, edit. Unbelievable. Rock star. Yeah. What was the? What would you say the issue was with the first edit? The first guy, uh, no offense to him, but he was a documentary guy, mm. so he didn't necessarily understand the core of this piece is the rhythm of performance. Mm-hmm. The, the, the the interaction between those two guys sure. sitting across the table, that either works perfectly mm-hmm. or it's like a car with a bad tune-up. Well, the first go-around was a car with a bad tune-up. Mm-hmm. Well, the problem is when you shoot a documentary, I got the camera on you, right? Mm-hmm. I let you roll. I got the camera on him. I let him roll. Mm-hmm. You're not moving. You're not yeah. doing a lot of stuff. You know, maybe put some graphics sure. in or whatever. Then when you get in the editing room, you kind of tighten it a you little bit, tighten it a little yeah. and then you yeah. put it together. Yeah. Not the case in a movie because you got to cut from different angles because you want to move in, you want to move out, you want to lift, you know, you want to do all this crazy stuff. And you got to have a sense for that. You got to have a feel for that. And and Brian, he was just, he was awesome. You're talking about one twelfth of a second is pretty much your tolerance. Mm -hmm. One, two frames is your tolerance Mm -hmm. between being exactly right and being noticeably wrong. And sometimes it's one frame and it's just it's you either have that ability it's a very particular ability i mean or you don't it's unbelievable if you think about it yeah. one frame of film yep. can make a difference in a scene and these guys somehow in their the way they're wired mm-hmm. can move it but on screen mm-hmm. we see it mm-hmm. and we're like lose the frame and you lose the frame and suddenly it works subconsciously you do it because what happens is the way that we communicate in real life there are two very important things that we process and we don't even realize. One of which is when we're in discussion and we're, especially when we're in deep discussion, yeah. we'll have little almost invisible muscle movements on our face, sure, sure. but they tell people like he believes this, he believes what he's saying yeah. or he's lying or yeah. not. Yeah. And then our blinks are part of that cold communication. Great editors understand that and they, uh, and they play use that. off of that. That's, yeah. good. that's how we brought the reality to the piece, yeah. the intention, intention and yeah. and so it's it's an art form. Yeah, no, that's good. That's good to know. So uh, as this is starting to edge into theaters, what is kind of some of the spooky stuff that starts happening? Oh, yeah. Uh, well, let's see if we if we keep. Well, you it- start off with the COVID that wiped us out. I was yeah. in the hospital for eight days, took us out for five months. Yeah. Then we had we, a- st- we started shooting in the prison. Uh, the prison was definitely haunted. Uh, at one Crazy. time, at one time, you, you guys dude. shot a horrible movie. Yeah. Way, haunted uh, prison. I'm telling you, ten oh, feet man. over that way, there was a guy behind the bars. Yeah. This is freaky stuff. Yeah, he had eaten someone. Oh Several people, okay, yeah. and he's standing right over there, looking through his so, little oh, window. Still, oh, this he, was this an was active a live prison? prison. This was an active prison. You guys went to an active prison. Active we were prison. inside the wire. And you guys were wild. That man. was crazy, and it was really crazy. And at one time, thirty years ago, this was actually when it was an open yard prison. It was the most violent prison and had the highest. It's a trip per capita murder rate in the United States. You so the old chief of the guards who's been there for forty five years. He's walking us around and he's showing us where everybody gets. Got killed at some point or another, or what? It was like, okay, this place is a little wild. I can't believe you guys went into an active. How does that even? How did? How did they even allow? A I don't film? know. It was a god <laughs> thing. They even said <laughs> to us when we asked to get into yeah. the prison, they said never happened. An action it's, of the it's, Lord. It's it's, it's a it's a state prison. You can't do the it. The warden basically said, he says, "There's no way this is ever going to happen, but I'll ask." And, then and we they, got they approval. said, "Yeah." And it was just, I mean, it was that kind of, wow. but there was a wing that was down. Yeah. They hadn't used it in 50 years because uh-huh. they tightened it all up. Yeah. And so there was no electricity, no, no water. But at night, there would be a light out of one of the cells yeah. and the shower would be running. Oh, gosh. Well, there's there's no water yeah. and there's no electricity. No electricity. Yeah. So you would have to go down and investigate. It's trippy stuff. 
So, you know, we're we're in this prison yeah. for the first three days. We shoot there, and then yeah. we hop to the set, yeah. which was in the convention center in Oklahoma City. Got it. Yep, yep, yep. Wow. And our, our, oh, so we knew there was going to be a spiritual dimension to the resistance. Having gone through Unplanned, we knew that. So we had a husband and wife ministry team, and we had a Catholic priest who was a trained exorcist. And uh, during shooting, he had an emergency appendectomy. His oh. appendix just exploded. Oh, my god! And his appendix burst during removal, and the surgeon told him. He arrived at, at the hospital in the middle of the night, and the surgeon told him, if you got here an hour later, you wouldn't Eight be here. Eight car yeah. crashes in 11 days, every car totaled. But no one got hurt. This is so, what, during, during filming? Or this, is this is during, during the, the 13 filming. days of filming. Oh my gosh. Okay, so this is just tip of the iceberg. The, the union. Our office, our office in Burbank, yeah. big building, yeah. the whole roof. We, us and the chosen were the only two people in the building. Yeah, the roof gets ripped off. That was last month. Okay, ripped. <laughs> the uh, only not building, a little bit of the, the roof. The only building. The in, whole roof. The yeah. only building in Burbank that lost, and it tore off the whole roof. And naturally, it happened as best anybody can tell. About two or three o'clock in the morning on a Saturday morning, so nobody's in the building. Yeah. So it turned it, into a water. It park. rains for ten hours before anybody figures out. And anything it's all is wrong. electrical. It's like if we put. Yeah, six foot of water in this we, room. We've been getting a lot of rain in Southern California. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Wow. So it was crazy. But so nobody else lost the roof. Our producer is putting his baby in his car seat. You know, at the car, and yeah. the doors jammed up. This against is last him. Saturday. At, literally three, four days ago. Yeah. And he's putting the baby in the car seat, and the baby gets stuck. So he reaches in. SUV hits the car door one inch from him. Wow. Okay. Forty-five miles an hour rips and crushes the car. He's left just standing there. No one got hurt. Holy moly. The next day, our marketing guy gets out of his car, pulls his car over mm -hmm. onto the side, parks, just parks, mm -hmm. He's walking into his house or whatever. Out of nowhere, somebody falls asleep, bam, destroys his car. Five seconds early, he would have been dead. What we see, what we saw through this whole thing is the devil would attack to mm -hmm. try to slow everything mm -hmm. down, but the Lord would protect. Yeah. It was these crazy things. Every email, every cell phone, every building we'd go in, the lights would go out. The electricity would shut. We're in Deluxe doing our final QC, which is quality control. Deluxe is like a $100 million campus at least. We're right? about to do it on the screen. The whole building shuts down. Jeez. We go to Office Depot. Office Depot. All I need is yellow pads. <laughs> we get to the door and the guy says, I'm sorry. The building just went out and went black. We can't, we can't use the register. Wow. We can't process sales. Now, that seems really weird and stupid, except it was pads we needed for our premiere. But so. listen, listen to this. In the room doing the press junket. You do a press junket before the movie yeah. on the premiere, and we got all the, you know. So there's a suite that's decked out pretty much like this. A lot of cameras, a lot of technical people filming and stuff. Do it, and they're doing the stuff, the and you only get the stuff and, one, you know, you know. People are coming in for their interviews. All of a sudden, the light starts flicking on and off, which screws up your shooting, right? Yeah, yeah. The sound mixer dies for no reason. So we try to fix that, right? Can't yeah. fix it again. dies. The cameras get corrupted, the digital discs. So we know what's going on because we hear voices coming out of the couch. Sheesh. So we call up the exorcist. He walks in. I'm telling you, this is right out of a movie. Yeah. He walks in. Walk, he says, I know what this is. And this guy is a stud. I mean, he's, he goes to the window, five floors up. There's nothing outside, mm -hmm. no balcony. He's got his back up against the window, has his book, starts in Latin, doing an exorcism. I'm like, I'm in a movie. He's performing the rite of exorcism for place. So if it's for a place, right? There, there, there's a, In the Catholic world, there's a rite for person, which everybody's familiar with, yeah. item and place. So he goes into the rite of exorcism for place. And then behind his right ear, there's a woman demonically chanting, trying to interrupt him because Jeez. he continues because he's used to this. Yeah. What was the line he got to where he said that? He gets to that, the point of the rite where he says in Latin, Bow down before the holy and terrible name of Jesus. And then all of a sudden, and the voice stops, the lights stop flickering, and everything's working. And terrible in that sense is the 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 old sense, in other words, it capable of inspiring terror. I mean, we can go on. It just Oof. for months and months. You guys and could months. have made a movie about the making of oh, this. Oh we're, we're thinking it's, it's just <laughs> it's crazy. You know, the last wow. the last one this last Monday of the producer who's parked car forty eight hours after the other producer gets his parked car. Totaled. I'm just like twenty four you know, hours before that we have our enough. we have our guy who's doing all our distribution for us. He gets on an airplane to come to the premiere. He comes to the premiere, hangs out, has a good time. On the way home, for no reason whatsoever, his ear explodes. Jeez. His eardrum perforates. So okay, so I think a question a lot of people are gonna have is as men of faith and all this stuff that you guys had to deal with, I'm sure you didn't know all this was going to happen. 
Uh, what is the heart and the vision behind making a horror movie, psychological thriller like this one? Well, I think that we're in a situation where, you know, uh, God's timing is perfect. Mm -hmm. When we did Unplanned, uh, we had actually had the rights for six years beforehand, and we wanted to do it, and the Lord said to us in prayer, not yet. And then one day we're in our office, and we both heard now, and we knew what he was talking about, and we went and made it within. And so why, when we put Unplanned in the theaters, within two years, Roe v. Wade had been flipped over, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. Perfect timing. Yep. So when he called us to do this, we tried to avoid it. Mm -hmm. You can kind of tell when the Lord wants you to do something, because the stuff you're planning over here— oh, yeah kind of goes this way, he and you're closes, like, no, I want to go that way. He closes down other options. And all the other options until you have one thing to do, and yep. you're like, okay. I guess this is what I'm doing. Right, yep. this is yep. what I'm going to do. Yep. So we do it. We knew it was perfect timing, because I have to say, if your listeners or anyone who's watching this, when you walk out of your house mm -hmm. today, mm -hmm. into the street, whatever, go to work, you're in your car, you got to admit that something is wrong. You can feel it. It's palpable. Yeah. There's a darkness. There's something off in the world. Mm -hmm. And what that is, it's evil. Evil is aggressively attacking. Now, look at the things that are going on in the world. Look at the things that are going on in our country. Look at the things that are going on against the church, against believers, all this stuff. So we believe that we were called to bring this movie out at this time. So it's ministry for us. Yeah. And so what we wanted to show people, we didn't want to embellish. We didn't you know, want to Hollywood do does spectacle. People walking on the walls and, you know, green pea soup flying and stuff. We didn't do that. We didn't want to do that. We couldn't do that. We only had $2 million. So what we did do is we showed the truth. We did our research. And what we do is we show the face of the devil, two men in a room, and we show how the devil manipulates and how he's evil. But more importantly, we wanted every single man, woman, and child in the world to know the devil is real. Evil is real. You can feel it. Mm -hmm. Don't brush it off yeah. because it's after you. It wants to destroy you. It wants your soul. It yeah. doesn't want you to go to heaven. So, you know, it's one of these very, and we've been getting these crazed reactions. I mean, absolutely off the wall. And, and a lot of this boils down to this. We didn't set out actually to want to go do a horror movie. I think every filmmaker at their core really only makes movies about one thing, if you look deep enough. With us, it's always about the fight between good and evil. Mm. And I think that what the Lord is looking to wake us up about right now at this moment in, in time is that we've become obsessed with what we perceive as a cultural battle. And it's not a cultural battle whatsoever. It's a spiritual battle. Mm, that's good. And it's the spiritual dynamic that we're being called to recognize. And that means that when we disagree too, we can't hate the person yeah. or that who represents the other side. Yeah. But we can look to fight the demonic forces that are manipulating that person. That's yeah. what we've got to focus our energy on. Right. We're on. trying to show people, we're not pointing at the person, we're pointing at the demonic that's influencing them yeah, and saying, good. look, you can step away from this. Mm -hmm. People don't realize there's so many things in people's lives where they're the occult, tarot cards, Ouija yeah. boards. You know what Ouija means? No. In French and German, yes, yes. Mm. You're submitting to, a, you're asking for some. Mm. For, it's a willing demonic possession that you're saying a yes, yes to if you play with a Ouija Have you ever board. said knock on wood? Yeah. I've okay. Said it, yeah. It's a habit, right? Mm -hmm. That people get, knock on wood. Yeah. That's the summoning of a demon. Mm. In ancient times, what the pagan druids would do, and they, they would, they would, demonic yeah. is that they would summon demons and the demons would be in the trees and the people from the villages would come to the trees and knock on mm -hmm. wood to get a favor mm -hmm. they're being infested yeah okay the demonic horror movies yeah. uh yoga reiki these things are not normal a yeah. lot of people do them you know tarot cards fortune tellers yeah it's horoscope it's everywhere yeah. turn on your tv or your movie theater harry potter uses real spells witchcraft dark spells yeah so is, is, is packaging uh nefarious a lot like in this kind of similar genre as some of this stuff intentionally trying to disrupt that and get the attention of the people that would be in that demographic exactly yes yeah. exactly that's what we felt so it's truly an evangelistic effort not, yeah. not, not in a necessarily an overt, we're going to preach the gospel it, and see if people it, want to accept Jesus, but like, let's expose evil for what it is exactly. it, it and is. get the wheel spinning. Right, we want and, them to think. Yeah. And it's the movie Christians have been asking us for for the last 10 years, ironically. Hmm. We've been asked by so many people over so many years, they say, look, I like your stuff, but I can't get my family member who's left the faith, I can't get my non-believing cousin or friend to go see a movie called God's Not Dead or Do You Believe sure. or something like that. Yeah, yeah. So they say, okay, give us the movie that functions. It looks like just another Hollywood mainstream movie. 
But after, and we'll watch it together. And then afterwards, they're going to have questions, and I'm going to be ready with have to have that discussion with mm -hmm, them. Mm -hmm. This is that movie. Yeah. And the cool thing is, it's entertainment too. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we it's entertainment. People come in and they they come out and they're riveted. Yeah. It, we're getting calls. People going back five, six, seven days in a row and bringing ten people each time. It's unbelievable. Yeah. So yeah, yeah I saw the what is the website that co con consolidates all the reviews. And it had like the reviews of the fans was like a ninety seven percent. Yeah, Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah, and, Tomatoes. and then the critics is like thirteen percent, which yeah. by the way was almost identical to mm -hmm. when the Chosen came out. Right. Jesus Revolution comes out, the audience loves right. it, and the critics hate it. Well, we have the widest realize, spread in history. Yeah, of, that's of, of, of any film yeah. that's got a story. There's We're number one in history. That's the farthest, the widest spread between people loving the it, the audience and, loving it, and the critics hating but it. But <laughs> people don't realize that Rotten Tomatoes is owned by Universal. Yeah, of course. And so if they're a front. Yeah. They these guys get paid yep. and they hate Christians and any kind of morality yeah. whatsoever. Yeah. You know, they want pervert they want the garbage that people are putting out. Sure. So how do how do you guys operate within the film industry, which like you said, is naturally going to be hostile and oftentimes make fun of Christians and you know whenever there's a Bible, the person's some sort of weird pervert or just, right, right. In, in, in a lot of this stuff. How do you guys navigate this space in terms of going through the process, obviously getting the film made? edited but then also being in theaters right like we, what, what is that process like to because it's kind of like a dance you guys are doing to be in this ecosystem but not of this ecosystem we have to be right we have to we have to actually exist outside of everything other than the theaters okay we get no support from anything or anywhere inside the hollywood system not from the studios well, we don't get no not support from distribution, but they not us. from financing you know we actually get the reverse mm -hmm. i mean we were alone on our release weekend and the uh, the Pope's exorcist decided we're going to drop you on we're going to drop on your head moved it from and October then, 13th to April 14th and, just and then to Renfield crush us. and the rest so yeah and then they put five more movies on top of that it's the first time in the history of they moved uh, uh, yes wow yes. just to crush us because they knew and the, Sony's got three thousand four thousand screens and thirty or forty million in, in marketing yeah we don't have that so. Sure. When they take three thousand screens, it leaves you know breadcrumbs for us. There was a deliberate effort to snuff out this film, and we went up against a hundred million dollars in total in advertising budget, which is crazy. So they just you know they just do that. Fortunately for us, the place that has the least bias against independent filmmakers is the theater owners. Yeah, because they're prime now. They they still bend to the studios because sure. studios say I want three thousand screens for this and for. But it's about this. popcorn for them. It's about selling, but it's mostly about selling popcorn and coca-cola for them mm -hmm. so if mm -hmm. you can put people in the seats they will tend to book you so that's what they did with us yeah so it's been out since april 14th right yes and how much longer is it going to be in theater so people can go check it out depends if people keep coming our numbers are actually rising but here's you know when we talk about the theaters being on our side not so much all the time because our numbers are rising. Mm -hmm. Our per screen average is rising. The We're making, like, for example, if you took last Thursday comparatively to yesterday, mm -hmm. our numbers are now going up. Oh, wow. we're making okay. more, that we doesn't happen. We sold out wow. the 10 p.m. show in Burbank and last they dropped night us. and they pulled us. Oh, so, no. So, they, so we're I mean, getting attacked yeah. by them crushing us out of the theater. So yeah. we're down to about 330 screens. But if the people go... Yeah. They can't, their God is money. Yeah. So if the people go, yep. they'll stop building the screens. We will sure. find a way to stay in theaters if, if Christians go out there and support us. Not and, only and, Christians, anyone. And, 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 and believers are just starting, the audience is just starting to wake up yeah. to this film, which yeah. is great. How how has it done so far in terms of uh, just... It's done good. Yeah. It's done good. I mean, it hasn't done, it hasn't done like, you know, $30 million opening weekend, but that would have been impossible. They didn't sure. give us enough screens. Sure. You know, if you get given a lifeboat... And there's 10 seats. That's the maximum you can do. Sure. So they gave us, you know, 100 lifeboats, yeah. right? Yep. So the maximum we can do is that. Yeah. But for the numbers, yeah. our per screen average is number one. Yeah. But, but you know, we, we're, we're fighting I, the good fight. Ironically, we're increasing per screen in the seats we sell per auditorium, whereas the other horrors are just in steep decline. Yeah. And how many theaters is it in right now? 333 for this weekend. And last weekend was more or less? Yeah, it was last 750, was give or take. Got it. Okay. So they dropped us like 420 screens. Gotcha. Yeah, we're going to be doing um, a meet. I'm going to be doing a meetup around uh, getting some people out to see it here locally. Um, try to get some attention. Yeah, on we it appreciate that it. kind of stuff. And I did a reaction yes. to the trailer. I'm not sure if you guys saw that. I loved, loved the trailer. I thought it was, it was amazing. Um, I think, listen, I think the ability to use narrative and, and story. 
I think is so important and is one of the things that unfortunately I think Christians probably within the last 50 years have kind of relinquished narrative and story. And I think that's why in many ways the enemy is winning in media yeah. and in art and in film is because we 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 pulled back. And so even the type of content that gets made is very like on the nose. Uh, the libs are bad. The leftists are evil. They hate you, right? And there's no story to it. And then when someone does good storytelling, whether it's Jesus Revolution, uh, it, it, this isn't a Christian film, but I would say it's Christian adjacent. Even when they did, um, uh, what is a woman? You know, and Matt Walsh and all those guys did that documentary. Right. When you get to the human story aspect, I think that what that is what has the ability to persuade and to win people over instead of just giving people the facts. And so I love that you guys are leaning. It says I love that it's not uh, another on-the-nose Christian film. Like, yeah. I think that's awesome. I think you can make movies. I yeah. think you make... Look, uh, what was the line that C.S. Lewis said about uh, you don't yeah, need C.S. more... C.S. Lewis said we don't need more Christian books. We need more books written by Christians. Mm. So, so you It's can the make same for movie. movies. We don't yeah. need more Christian movies. We need more movies made by Christians. Because where... then your, your, your morality, your faith values... Or in the movie, yes. But you don't need to. You don't need to preach, yes. You know, and I, and you know, the, now look, I don't have a problem with people doing that. But what we do is what you just saw. That's yeah. the kind of thing we took on the subject. We did it. We believe we did it for the Lord. And I will say, look, the a cell phone is a theater, mm -hmm. and I, we've said from the beginning, if Peter, Paul, James, John were here today. They wouldn't go in and knock on doors. It's inefficient. Mm -hmm. What would they do? Mm -hmm. They'd make a movie. Mm. They'd make a TV show because you're reaching tens of millions of people. Mm -hmm. You know, I know, we could take something that, we could take this show right now and beam it across the world. Mm -hmm. Hundreds of millions of people would say it if mm -hmm. they wanted to, obviously, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So that's the way to do it. That's why it's so powerful. So everything you're saying is spot on. It's some, we gave that up. Yeah. And they took it. Yeah. And the devil was smart enough to do it. L Lenin, Stalin, Hitler all said the same thing. If I control the movie theaters, I control the world. Wow. And it's a no, not a new idea. It's 2,500 years ago yeah. since, since Plato decided that in his idea of a perfect republic, he wouldn't allow drama. Interesting. Because he said it's too powerful. Wow. And he said the reason why is that it has people do things, undertake actions based on emotion rather yep. than logical thought. Yeah. And so, and, and it's also how, what, what the Bible teaches us in Jesus, it doesn't start actively, in the Gospel of Matthew, doesn't start actively delivering parables until the Pharisees are demonstrably already trying to kill him. It's how you speak truth to power. That's good. In, in, in pretty much all the uses of, the, of parables in the, in the Bible, whether it's Jesus or otherwise, it's you speak truth to power through story. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Guys, we're going to go to some of our uh, questions from our online community. So if you guys sure. got a question... Um, for Chuck and Carrie, do me a favor, just make sure you write question first, and we're gonna I'm gonna ask him some of your guys' question. Uh and and we'll get to that here in just a moment. Yeah, I think uh I think we need more of it. I think the fact that you guys were able to do it at, for two million dollars is great, you know, and I think it, whether they're series, whether it's whether it's films, movie theaters, not movie theaters, all that kind of stuff, I think i think it's awesome. And I'm and I'm and I'm pumped for you guys. And I think I think um people will show up and see it. And I think once it hits streaming or online phones, I think people will pay to see it there too. Um, Cause it's still kind of weird with people who, you know, um, go want to not go to the theaters yet. Like, right. like, like some folks just are like, eh, I'm not really into theaters like that. I love going to the theaters. Yeah, it's great. Right? It's, it's fun. The big screen experience is great, but some people still like to watch stuff at home. Um, how can we get someone asked? How can we get Joe Biden to see this? <laughs> David, you're, you're dumb, man. Uh, that's not my new I'm, favorite I'm, person. I'm yeah. not sure in this lifetime we can arrange happen. that. <laughs> I don't think that's gonna. happen. I don't think I'll remember it if he saw it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I don't. Th I don't think that's gonna happen. All right. Uh, question: When do you think it will be on streaming platforms? That was another question. It'll be uh, premium uh, video on demand on June second. Will be its debut. Also, if you're in Canada. We've been blocked out from Canada completely, so that's where it will, that's when it will also debut there uh, on iTunes and some other platforms. And then there's a general uh, home video release will be in mid July. Got it. Okay. Um, can we get it playing in Puerto Rico? There's a few theaters that play movies that aren't necessarily mainstream. So apparently, my buddy John is in Puerto Rico. Didn't we, we are we we are at least we were playing in Puerto Rico. I don't know if we're still holding or not, uh, but we were uh, playing. In some th about ten theaters, I believe in Puerto Rico. In Puerto Rico, so we should be. If you it, check, yeah. you may find that you have show times available. Right. Uh, uh, do you guys have any advice for a young Christian that wants to get into filmmaking? Yes. Yeah. Call us. 
Yes. So, <laughs> so we're, you know, uh, you can call Ruslan or, or you can, we can help you, but I would say you need to basically do two things. If you do these two things, the first thing is you do not want to get in the movie business uh, unless you are called to do it because it's the most brutal, nasty mm. You will end up losing your soul. It yeah. is a place where the devil lives. But if you are called for it, mm -hmm. then yes, because then the Lord is with you. And the second thing is, don't go to film school. Don't waste your time. You need to get around a set. If you can get on a set, yeah. call us. We'll put you on a set. We'll make you get coffee for 30 days or whatever. Work and, for free on a real set, and it's a lot cheaper than paying tuition. And if you're lucky, school, you won't be working for free either. Yeah. You know, so like, just reach out to us. Yeah. Uh, you know, a, a bit of you got to kind of pay your dues yeah. in the process. Well, you know, you got to see it. You, once, you, once you're once on set, you'll learn so much. You'll learn the equivalent of four years of college in one day, yeah. one week. Yeah. But, you know, you, 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 you'll you know after you're on set. Crazy. It's like the circus. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it's long hours. It's hard work. But there's a passion for it. That's so. good. Uh, what, you guys mentioned earlier that it was not playing in Canada. Is there a reason why Canada doesn't want it? Or yeah, just the Canadian distributors are very progressive. Mm. Highly, highly, highly progressive. And so, you know, with Unplanned, they went so far as the uh, the Prime Minister's uh, chief of staff uh, complained that we got it and said we should have been censored out of Canada. So it's a, it's a different environment. Sadly, there. Canada is practically communist now. What about the UK? UK will probably be going out uh, with iTunes when we do our home video release we don't have theatrical set up there, yeah. so we'll probably the same time we do our home video here, we'll probably be debuting home video there. Okay. So look for us in look for us uh, premium video iTunes early June and general release in July. Okay. And then people are asking, what's next? What films are you guys looking to do in the future? What are you guys working on now? We are expanding. Uh, the Lord put on our heart to go to Texas and Tennessee, um, uh, and so we're leaving Los Angeles uh, and. We are expanding. I don't want to do one movie or TV show every year, year and a half, because mm -hmm. I believe you can change the culture. But if you put out 10 or 12 or 20 movies and TV shows, mm -hmm. you can really affect it. So we have a lot of projects that we're very excited about. We have one called The Last Patriot, which is the government comes for the guns in a small Texas town, mm -hmm. says no. Uh, we have a basketball movie about prayer and sports. We have some TV shows. Then we have some, you know, we have a love story. We have a couple of Westerns. We, we have a lot coming uh, down the pipe. What do you guys think of in terms of how things have shifted in the last, I'd say the last decade, really, since the explosion of Netflix. And it seems like we're shifting away from films to series. Yeah. Right? And so, like, when I, I remember reading Screwtape Letters, I'm like, this could have been a full-on multi-season series. That's exactly what we're going to do right? with Nefarious. You got, you, okay, it's, that's it's awesome. Exa it's exactly what we were going to do. Yeah. And uh, But I, I will say, yes, you're right. Unfortunately, the movie theater, which I agree with you, is the greatest place because that your you all your defenses go down when you're sitting there. There's nothing like having popcorn and soda yeah, and yeah. you know you're on a date or whatever it is and you're watching and the something communal experience of yes. an audience yeah, watching yeah, yeah. it with and, you and it's amazing. But unfortunately, people you know they've been burned. You know most movies you go to are garbage. Yeah. They're not good. Sure. And you know the the time of the 80s and 90s where there was movie after movie. Yeah. Hollywood's putting out propaganda now. Yeah. They're not putting out movies. Or they're putting out the same movie over and over. And over. I, can't, I can't. I mean, I saw a trailer for Fast and the Furious, whatever. Eleven or something. They like were that. in space. I'm like, do, the, the racing. I'm not joking. I thought it was a uh, what is that called? A deep fake. I'm sitting there watching the trailer, and they're in. They're literally shooting up in space now. I'm like, this is a racing movie about cars, uh, and you're making just complete nonsense at this point. You know the plot of the movie. They're in cars, and they go very fast. And, and they're in space <laughs> now. Like, what are we doing? We're breaking uh, in space. Uh, but streaming is 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 powerful, and yeah. it's uh, you know people can sit in their own house, and yep. they can they they have a voracious demand. Yeah. Well, I loved what the chosen did, where they did the premiere, the first two episodes of season three, and the last two episodes of season three. Uh, was it season three or season four? Season three, I think. Three. We're in theaters. Yeah. And I was like, that's yeah. a great balance. Like, you're going to put it out anyway. They're, they're going to put it out however they're going to put it out through their own platforms. But then you take it and you still give people that in-theater experience, which I totally agree. And so I saw both and I was like, this is this is amazing. Like, I think it's it, the it's, wave of the future. You think you think so? Yeah, I, I think it is. You gotta you gotta. The days of just everybody flocking to movies are over. I yep. think you need to be ingenuity. Yeah, you have to have that ingenuity and stuff like that. And I think it was a great call on their yeah. part. 
Yeah. So are you guys looking to to essentially do the same sure. format with this film, making it into a series? Basically, yeah, I, I think we could do a prequel, a sequel, and a TV show. You know, the prequel. The nice thing about Nefarious is I could put him anywhere in time. I could put him at the French Revolution. Uh -huh. You know that he oh, caused. I see you know, yeah, and I could yeah. do a period piece, right? The sequel. We left the movie with a cliffhanger, uh -huh. so people want to know. Sure. But I think also a TV show would be cool because Nefarious is getting into people's lives, and we show that. Yeah. And James Martin, the guy, is trying to stop it and yeah. you know i so we're excited about it for yeah. lack of a better term touched by a demon <laughs> <laughs> i see what you did there uh do you guys have any other questions i'm, I'm, I'm keeping an eye on the chat um yeah I, th I think there's a lot of disruption happening right now in the marketplace and i think it's it's like this weird um you 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 need to be in the theaters you need to be in these spaces but at the same time you know these spaces aren't pro god pro christian um, They're not even pro country or pro family yeah. anymore. But to your point, they are pro capitalism. They sure. are pro. Hey, if people turn up and people go and support and watch these things, and it's turning a profit, that's their ultimate north star. And so I think that's why it's so important for Christians to go and support films Absolutely. like this, support the Chosen, Jesus Revolution stuff that's coming out. I think it's 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 healthy because I think the more there's a precedent that there's a demand and there's numbers for stuff like this, the more I think more stuff's going to get funded, and then it'll go from a two million dollar movie to a twenty million dollar series to you know more and more, and eventually build it up to something that could be massive. Yeah, you know? this can't happen unless our demographic embraces it. Yeah, it, it will stop if we don't embrace it. Yeah, that's good. Uh, do you guys have any uh, final thoughts for the folks who are watching this? Any Anything you want to close us with? I, I would just say that go to the movie. I think you're going to be moved. I think you're going to be touched. I think it's going to open and enlighten. You know, the whole goal here was to show people that evil is real. Evil exists. If you look around in the world, you'll see that evil is real. I mean, it's right here. And that this, if this awakens you, I think that's a great thing. And I think that... I think you're going to end up talking about it with all your friends and your family and stuff like that. And, you know, look, I, I, I do believe the movie is anointed. I believe the Lord is separating the wheat from the chaff, but he still wants to call the chaff. Mm. He wants to save the chaff. It's and he's good. saying to people, look, pay attention. You're yeah. being manipulated. This is going, this, this demonic force wants your soul. Yep. I want you to, I want you with me. And there's only two places you're going to end up, yeah. upstairs and downstairs. Yeah. So there's no in-between, there's no hanging out over there, it's upstairs and downstairs. Yeah, and, and so I, we try to bring that forward. The two things we hear over and over again, well, the one thing we hear over and over again is people are saying days later they're still thinking about the movie. Mm. It doesn't let them go. And I'd say this is really, if you if you plan on going to the film, and I hope you do, bring your non-believing friend, mm. bring your non-believing family member, and you'll be surprised at the way they come out of this thing. It's good. That's good. All right, guys. Uh, thank you so much for being here. I really no appreciate problem. you. This was great. I can't wait to see it in theaters uh, with some of you guys. And so, if you guys want to go and and see the theater, the see the theater, see the movie in theaters with me, uh, make sure you stay tuned, uh, locked into our online community, and uh, I'll let you guys know more information about that.